Hello students, I am Jaspreet Kaur and today we are going to study the new topic that is the Pauli's Exclusion Principle which belongs to the chapter number 2 that is the structure of atom. So till now we have studied about different concepts related to the quantum numbers and the other principles as well and the theories in this chapter. Today we are going to study about the filling of those orbitals that we studied last time, how those are particularly filled and how many electrons a particular orbital can have. So let's have a look at the statement, very first thing of the Pauli's exclusion principle. It states that no two electrons can have the same set of all the four quantum numbers. To revise it, we studied about quantum numbers. For a particular electron, there were the four quantum numbers that were present. The first quantum number that used to tell us about the outermost shell. The second quantum number that used to tell us about the subshell in which that particular electron is present. And then moving on, we got to know about the orbital of that particular electron in which it is revolving or what is the orbital in which it is present. And the Finally, we had the spin of that particular electron, whether it is revolving in the clockwise manner, it is sorry, it is spinning in a clockwise manner or in an anti-clockwise manner. So this particular principle, it tells us that if there is a one electron which is present, then that particular electron cannot have all the four quantum numbers same. Let's talk about when we have K, that is a K shell, fine, we have N is equal to 1. When we have n is equal to the 1, it means that the value of L would be 0, clear, and the value of m is equal to the 0. It means we have just one orbital, clear, we have just, sorry, one orbital that is present with us, and in that particular orbital, if we talk about the electron which is present, it could have m is equal to the 0 here, it could have s is equal to plus 1 by 2, or it could have the same values of the n, fine, s is equal to minus 1 by 2. It means that that particular electron which is present in the K shell, it can have the two kinds of the spin orientations, either in the clockwise manner, spin up, or in the anti-clockwise manner, which is the spin down. So from this particular thing, we got to know that if there is an electron which is present in a given orbital, it can have the two kind of the orientations related to that particular electron, fine. From here, we got to know that it is not having all the same four quantum numbers. There is a difference in the quantum numbers. All of them, they are not at all same. So that is about the Pauli's exclusion principle for statement. The second one, an orbital contains maximum of two electrons. Now we can just study about it further from this particular table. Like when, when we have n is equal to the one, the L value of L was 0 because we studied this in the last time that the value of the L it starts from 0 to n minus 1 and basically which this is the azimuthal quantum number that tells us about the number of uh, sub shells that are being present in the given shell or the outermost energy level shell. Moving ahead we have the number of the orbitals which is being given us by the Magnetic quantum number, clear. It tells us that the uh, value of the, if L is equal to the 0, this one is also equal to the 0 because it always goes with the value minus L to the plus L, the value of M and it always take into consideration the 0 value, clear. So if the value of M is equal to the 0, here we can get to know that, okay, in this particular shell, number of electrons, because there is a one orbital and a one orbital, it a single orbital, it can accommodate only two electrons which is being proved by this particular thing that those two electrons could be with the, with the spin up or with the spin down, clear? Moving ahead, if the value of n is equal to the two, clear? That means the second subshell that is, uh, second shell that is present, the main energy shell, it is the second one, the electron is present in the second shell. Now the value of L, it could be either 0 or 1, clear? 0, it stands for 2s and when I talk about the 1, it will means 2p orbital. Now 2p subshell. Moving ahead, talking about the number of the orbitals that could be present over here for the 0, 
number of orbitals that is the zero only that is the zero one then for the one it will go through the values minus l to the plus l and minus one zero and the plus one now in total we have one two three and four orbitals a single orbital can accommodate two electrons it means four orbitals can accommodate eight electrons clear moving ahead we have n is equal to the three the main energy shell that is a three then number of the subshells would be 0, 1 and 2 that is the three subshells in that particular subshells number of orbitals that we are going to study with the 0 we have just the 0, 1 clear with the 1 we have minus 1, 0 and the plus 1 that is for the 3p, 3px, 3b, 3p by 3pz and for the d we have this one minus 2, 0, uh, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1 and the plus 2. Now these are in total 5 clear these are 3 and this is 1 so we have total of the 9 orbitals present in the uh, when the value of n is equal to the 3 so here we can say that we have total of the 18 electrons so from this particular thing we got to know that yes if the electron is present in the orbital in a particular orbital only two electrons could be present not more than that clear one could be there with the spin up other could be there with the spin down second thing is that ki if there is a particular electron which is present in an orbital us electron ke four ke four quantum numbers that is the n l m s they could not be same two of them can have the same value same set of value of uh, their values but when i talk about the four all the four quantum numbers they will be different they will vary from one another they can't have the same value of the same clear then when we have this complete table we can have one generalized concept that when the maximum number of the orbitals is the n scale clear the maximum electrons that are present would be 2 n square so we can have it for example, if I talk about this n is equal to 1, maximum number of the orbitals, that is the 1 scale, clear we have only 1 and the number of electrons 2 into 1 scale, that is the 2. When I talk about this particular one, n is equal to the 2, maximum number of orbitals 4, so that is the 4 scale, maximum number of orbitals in a shell is equal to the n scale, n is equal to the 2, so value would be 2 square that is equal to the 4 and then multiplying with that with the 2. So I hope the concept is clear with the value of the n which is this one. We are scaring that one to get the number of the orbitals which are present in the given shell and after that to find the maximum number of the electrons we have 2 n square multiplying the same with the 2. I guess the concept is clear to you people that in the Pauli's exclusion principle we have just to find out we it just tell us about this thing ki koi bhi ek electron jo present hai orbital mein uske char ke char quantum numbers that is the n l m s it could not be same unki value vary karni chahiye thodi thodi after that it is also there that ek orbital mein we have just two electrons that could be present students Please keep in mind that this concept of the Pauli's exclusion principle is a basis of understanding the higher concepts that we will, we will be studying later on. So I hope that you people are going to, you know, read it out carefully. This is the concept which is usually asked in the exam for the three marks in the paper explain Pauli's exclusion principle with the set of the examples. So this is particular one that you can explain over there. So moving ahead we have the topic that is the energy level diagrams. Energy level diagrams is basically the arrangement in which the different orbitals they are organized according to their relative energies. As I have already mentioned the statement that the arrangement in which the various orbitals are arranged in the order of their relative energies is said to be the energy level diagram. Now for this particular one, why this energy level diagram is important? That is really very important because we have to fill the orbitals according to the energies only. It tells us about the energies of the different orbitals, fine, which one will come first and which one will be filled later on. This is basically got when we are clear with the concept of this energy level diagram. So basically there is a one question that originates over here that why the hydrogen atom 
it is having all the uh, all the subshells that are present they have the same energy while if we talk about the multi electron atom where belong when there is the electron which is present even to the same energy shell the different subshells they have the different energies on the other hand hydrogen with the same quantum number or with the same energy shell the different uh, if we are talking about the orbitals or the subshells they have the same energy so why it is there the very first thing when i talk about the hydrogen atom that is a single electron atom clear so in the case of the hydrogen atom we have seen this thing that energy is directly proportional to the principal quantum number clear now this particular uh, principal quantum number that tells us about the main shell in which the electron is present moreover when we talk about the subshells in which the electron is present it is also having the same energies clear our principal quantum number let's talk about it is 2 that means we have the subshells 2s and the 2p according to the this particular one when we have the single electron atom available with us it will be having the same energies for all the subshells in which the electron is present now this is this this is a postulate which is set for this hydrogen atom moreover they say this thing that let's talk about the uh, the single electron atom only if my electron is present in the 1s then the energy it is less than that of the 2s but the energy of the subshells which are belonging to the second sub, uh, second shell it is the same only so it would be 2p moreover if i move to the third orbital which is a 3 in that case the energy of the 3s and 3p and 3d that will be equal but that of the 4 that will be less than it would be less than that of the energy of the four orbitals the orbitals which are present with the quantum number 4 so here it could be 4s which is equivalent to 4p equivalent to 4d and the 4f and so on it will go on so here from the uh, for the concept of the single atom electrons we could say that whenever the electrons they are present in the main shell in a particular main shell for the single electron atoms in that case the energies of the subshell it remains the same but the concept is not same when we talk about the multi electron atoms in the multi electron atoms what happens these subshells they vary with the energy they don't have the same energy as it was there in the case of the hydrogen atom so let's talk about it why the concept it varies for the multi electron atoms so when we talk about the multi electron atoms in that case if i talk about the value of the n is 2 or 3 in that particular case the value of the l it will be there to vary for 2 it is equal to 0 and 1 for 3 the value would be 0 1 and 2 since the values of the l they are differing the azimuthal quantum number it has a different values for the same value of the n or the outermost energy level in that case the electrons if we are talking about the in the multi electron atoms suppose that this is the multi electron uh, atom that is present with us in that case when the electrons are being added or the electrons are being removed in this particular subshell what will happen the electronic repulsions are very more as compared to the uh, single electron atoms and when the repulsions the mutual repulsions between the electrons are higher in that case the energies will definitely differ from one another for example if i say 2s and the 2p in the case of the multi electron atom in that case they both of them they have the different energies moreover if i talk about 3s and the 3p or the 3d as i talked about the same in the uh, single electron atom in that case 3s 3p and 3d they were having the same energies but here they are having the different energies in the case of the multi electron atom the only reason being here because the electronic repulsions are very high as compared to the multi electron atom where there is a attraction just between a single electron and the positively charge nucleus so uh, this concept is really very different and important to know because in the case of the multi electron atom the pattern is different but for the single electron atom the pattern is different now here is a diagram that i have drawn for you people in which we could see that 
how the energies they vary now this is the energy level diagram clear this is the this arrow it shows actually the increment in the energies 1s is the one which is having a very lower energy so i would say that 1s it could be said to be the present when the electron is present in the 1s orbital in the hydrogen atoms it is said to be present in the ground state of that particular atom clear we talked about this thing that 2s and the 2p they are having the same energies in the case of the single electron atom such as the hydrogen atom and since the energies of the different subshells that was same though they were present in the same shell or the main shell these orbitals they are said to be the degenerate orbitals degenerate orbitals means that these particular orbitals they are having the same energies for the different subshells in which they are present moving ahead we have 3s 3p and the 3d the energies are varying from the second orbital what in that particular case for the single electron atom the energies are same for 3s 3p and 3d again these are said to be the degenerate orbitals for the single electron atom and moving ahead this is the case clear this particular arrangement that is set to be the energy level diagram for the arrangement of the orbitals according to their relative energies moving ahead we have one thing that is left we talked about ground state we talked about degenerate orbitals last one is the excited state of the atom now what is the excited state of the atom it is a state in which the electron is not present in that 1s orbital it has actually gained the energy it has raised from that particular level to the higher energy level and that state when the electron is not present in its stable state but it is present in some another state which is not at all its own state that is the excited state to be clear with this one or to simplify this excited state is what when the electron is present let's talk about hamara electron ground state mein present hai ground state uski sabse stabilized form hoti hai that is a stable position now if it is given a small amount of the outside energy usko thodi si bhi agar energy de rahi hu bahar se what will happen this particular electron which is present in the atom wo unstabilized ho jayega अपनी पोजीशन से वो ऊपर जाने की कोशिश करेगा बट द स्टेट इन विच इट इज़ गोइंग जिस स्टेट पे भी वो जा रहा है दैट इज़ नॉट इट्स ओन स्टेट वो उसकी स्टेट नहीं थी उसका कंफर्ट जोन ये था दिस इज़ नॉट इट्स कंफर्ट जोन व्हेन इट विल गो टू द हायर लेवल दैट इज़ द एक्साइटेड स्टेट नाउ दिस एक्साइटेड दिस स्टेट in which the electron is now present this is said to be the excited one in this particular state electron won't stay for much longer time period it will only stay for the time period it is having that particular energy uske baad kya hoga ye electron khud wapas apni position pe aana chahega kyunki iski energy jitni bhi thi it has utilized it over there in the excited state moreover ye state itni itni unstabilized hoti hai ki electron yahan pe apne aap ko comfort level mein rakh hi nahi pata hai aur usko wapas niche aana padta to its stabilized state or that is the ground state so that is the concept of the excited state of the electrons in the atoms uh, we could talk about the ground uh, state of the electrons in the atom and the degenerate orbitals which is very very important guys degenerate orbitals when the orbitals they are having the same energies for the different subshells and this is basically possible only in the case of the single electron atom for example the case of the hydrogen atom so uh, as far as now we have studied about why the multi electron atoms in their case the energies of the electrons present in the different subshells is different there is a reason that could be this reason could be explained with the help of the energy level diagram as well we talked about this particular one clear where we talked that in the case of single electron atom the energies of the uh, orbitals it increase accordingly clear here this is the this is the uh, energy level diagram which is for the multi electron atom now we could see that the energies of the 1s it differs from the 2s and the 2s it differs from the 2p which was not the case in the when we have uh, studied about this hydrogen atom moving ahead we have 3s 3p 4s and the 3d so something which is very different now that 4s before 3d orbital which is present over here there is a reason behind it that will study just Uh, after this particular uh, studying this energy level diagram 
Now 2s and the 2p, they are having different energy concept is already clear to you people because the repulsions are very high in this particular case. Moving ahead, there is a one thing. What are the causes due to which the multi-electron atoms, the, you know, they have the different values, different energy values for the subshells in, in which the electrons they are present. The very first one we can talk about, we can talk about the nuclear charge. Fine. So what is the nuclear charge and how does it actually influence that? We know that there is always the attraction between the positively charged nucleus and the electrons which are present in the given orbitals. Now if I talk about the hydrogen atom, in that case uh, there is only a one electron which is present and the attraction is between that nucleus and single uh, that particular electron only. Clear? Now in the case of the multi-electron atoms as we could see over here, there are the number of subshells, there are many electrons that are evolving. What happens, the electrons which are present in the given shells, the inner shells, they usually protect the electrons which are present in the outermost shells. Clear? It means, if the outermost shells jo hai, wo protect kar, they are being protected by the innermost shells, until the nuclear charge hai, that would be able to reach least clear. In that case, the nuclear charge is not that effective as compared to the nuclear charge which is attracting the electrons in the nearby orbitals or the in the nearby shells. What will happen since these outer orbitals, they are experiencing the less, uh, you know, influence of that nuclear charge. The effective nuclear charge which will be felt by these electrons which are present over here, that, that would be less as compared to these electrons. So here we talk about two things, that is the effective nuclear charge and shielding effect. Now very first thing, what is the shielding effect? I told you that these inner shell electrons, when they are acting as a shield, they are acting as a shield for the outer shell electrons and this charge of the nucleus, it is not able to reach to them to the maximum extent that is said to be the effective nuclear charge is very less in that particular case and this concept is the screening effect, screening or the shielding effect because these inner shell electrons, they are shielding the outer shell electrons in that particular case. Moreover, this is said to, uh, there is a concept of the effective nuclear charge that means the actual charge or the nuclear charge which is felt by the electrons uh, uh, present in the outermost shell that is the effective nuclear charge. Clear? So that was the concept of the effective nuclear charge and that is the concept of the screening effect. Now how the screening effect it is responsible for these uh, filling of the orbitals and uh, according to their different energies. Let's talk about the orbital that is the 2s and the 2p orbitals. Now I know that n is equal to 2 in both the cases but here l is equal to 0 and here l is equal to 1. Clear? Now because we have the same energy level and value of n is equal to the 2 but the different subshells value are present there. It means that if I talk about the complete energy that will be different. 2 plus 0 is 2 and 2 plus 1 is the 3. So n plus l it will vary. In this particular case of the multi-electron atom it is not only the uh, main energy level on which the energy of the electron is uh, depending, it's also the azimuthal quantum number. So because of these, this thing that these two factors are responsible for uh, determining the energy of the subshells, that is why we could say that in the particular uh, energy level, the same, even with the, when there are the orbitals with the same, you know, quantum number, their energy levels, it varies. They are having the different energy levels. For example, this 3s, 3p, 4s and the 3d. When, when we are talking about 4s and the 3d, let's stay here. n is equal to 4 in the case of the, in the case of 4s and value of l is equal to 0. 3d, n is equal to 3 and value of l is equal to 2. If I talk about 4 plus 0, that is the 4 and 3 plus 2 is equal to the 5. Since we know that in the case of the multi-electron atom, the energy is dependent on the value of n as well as the l. Here we find out that n plus l is 4 and the n plus l is 5 in the case of 3d. It means the filling of the 3d orbitals will take later on as compared to the 4s orbitals. So there are two or the three things that we could conclude from here that higher the value of n, it means higher will be the energy. So 
when the value of n and the l is more the value of energy it increases clear moreover the filling of the orbitals it will depend on the value of the n and the l in the case of the multi electron atoms there would be the cases when the subshells like 3d in the case of 3d and the 4s the the one with the higher quantum number it is filled before the one with the lower principal quantum number that will depend upon the value of their energies that is also very important so this was the concept of the energy level diagram how they are being filled in the different orbitals what is the reason behind it how the nuclear charge shielding effect it is affecting the filling of the electrons in the different orbitals